attention to the stage as we prepare for Texas Congressman Ron Paul. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's great to be here. Looks like a very exciting day, and we're delighted with the way things are going. <laughs> the one thing about our campaign, it's been identified with one particular word, and I'm very proud of it. We are identified with the cause of liberty. I'm convinced that liberty and an understanding of that and the Constitution can bring us peace and prosperity. But today I'm going to emphasize something slightly different from just the cause of liberty, because there is something that precedes liberty, and that is life. If I believe in a very limited role for government, but the prime reason that government exists in a free society is to protect liberty, but also to protect life, and I mean all life. Now I want to tell a very short story, because time is short, about how I came to be very strong right to life. When I was in medical school in the 1950s, it was a non-issue. It was assumed everybody was pro-life and abortions weren't to be done. In the 1960s, as I was a medical resident studying OBGYN, the doctors in the medical centers were defying the law in doing abortions. This shook me up. One day I walked into an operating room and they did a hysterotomy, which is a cesarean section, lifted out a baby that was crying and breathing and put it in a bucket in the corner of the room and let it die and pretended nobody heard it. That was rather disturbing. But as I walked out of that room, because I was a student and an observer, I walked out of the room and walked down the corridor and a baby about the same size was born prematurely. And all of a sudden, 20 people, nurses and doctors, all rushing around to save the baby's life, which seemed very logical. But my conclusion that very day is you cannot have relative value for life and deal with that. We are not, we cannot play God and make those decisions. All life is precious. If we are to defend liberty and allow people to spend the money as they want, go to the church that they want, and run their lives as they please, you have to understand where that liberty and that life comes from. It does not come from the government. It comes from our Creator. But there's a lot of ways you can defend liberty, in many ways, in a personal way, in an intellectual way, in, in a religious manner. But also, as determined as I am to promote the cause of uh, pro-life and, and making sure that uh, governments don't slip off to do defe you know, uh, defeating life and taking life, one of the most atrocious positions this country could have, in, uh, and that is, where government will come along and with force, the armed force of the RRS, and take money from people who strongly believe in pro-life and commit abortions with that. That should be reversed. But be, being pro-life can be extended and pro-liberty even into all ages. Yes, it is good to be pro-life, and we must be pro-life, or you cannot be pro-liberty the way I understand it. 
But I also think it's being strongly pro-life if we work very hard to have a policy when those young people, those babies that are born, when they come of age, that their lives are just as precious and they are never required to fight in undeclared, unwinnable wars. I find it very difficult to protect liberty if you don't truly understand what the Patriot Act is all about. I understand I was in Washington with the great concern on the day after or the day of 9-11. But the Patriot Act is an attack on our liberties in the Fourth Amendment. It does not solve the problems that we face. We cannot protect liberty by taking liberty away from the American people. If, if, if you want to think about the issue that comes about if you get careless of the pr protection of liberty, the, the uh, Patriot Act, along with the TSA, just think of what is happening at our airports. If we tolerate that type of in interference with our liberties, I believe that we have to be pessimistic about the outcome of what we're doing. But. You cannot repeal the Fourth Amendment in order to say, yes, we can give up a little bit of our freedoms to be safe. You never have to give up liberties to be safe. You know, foreign, foreign policy has been a big issue in our campaign because the country is tired of the war. And we're all so broke. The wars have been going on for 10 years. They're undeclared. They're fought under international banners, NATO and the United Nations, and we don't see an end to it. But it's also costing us a lot of money. We're into wars that are costing us trillions of dollars. Those trillions of dollars should have been left in the economy to build jobs and produce prosperity here at home. One other symbolism of a failed foreign policy is what we did in Iraq. We went into Iraq. We were supposed to go into Iraq to get the Al-Qaeda. There was no Al-Qaeda. We went in there to get weapons of mass destruction. There were no weapons of mass destruction. Today, one half of the Christians have been run out of Iraq. We have not done a good job. And the Iraqi government and the Iraqi people now are closer to the Iranians than they have ever been. But symbolically, I want to tell you what was done in Iraq. We built an embassy there. The embassy is big as the Vatican. And just recently, the DOD budget authorized the employment of 17,000 people to work in this embassy. That is not the way to achieve prosperity in this country. But there is a lot that we must do to promote growth in this country. But you have to know why we have problems in this country. Why do we have boom periods and bust periods? It is related to something very, very important if you want to understand economics and you want prosperity. You have to understand the monetary policy. You have to understand the mischief of the Federal Reserve System and we have to change it. <laughs> In order to attract investments and attract capital to, into a country, you cannot have a weak currency. We inflate endlessly, which means we print too much money to pay for the debt. That weakens the currency and it chases capital overseas. It goes to the stronger countries. Now, guess what? We're the biggest, the greatest indebtor in the history of the world 
And guess what? We owe $1.4 trillion to China. Then we wonder why we have a problem. You have to have a strong currency. There's nothing wrong with us reinstituting the Constitution because it's still on the books that only gold and silver can be legal tender. Also, you have to have proper environment for companies to bring their money back home. You can't have a company make money or park money overseas and then double tax them when we come back, they come back home and charge them 35% again. That's chasing capital away. That has to be changed. And it would be a good idea for us to give serious consideration to get rid of all this income tax and corporate taxation. And of course, with a strong currency and with a change of the tax system, you also have to deal with the regulatory system. We have to shrink the size of the Federal Register, not constantly expanding the size of the Federal Register. We need a lot less regulations, not more regulations. It is it is said that those of us who promote the free market system, that we don't care about regulating those ruthless big corporations. But just think of how the marketplace and sound economic policy in the Constitution would regulate those companies and banks that are ripping us off. That's the regulation that we have to have. And we don't need to be ba bailing out the big banks and the big corporations, dumping the debt on the American people, causing the unemployment, and causing the little guy to lose his house. The problems are very large. They're very difficult. The solution is not complicated if you understand how we got into this mess. Basically, we got into this mess because we have lost respect for our law of the land, the Constitution, and we have lost our enthusiasm for freedom, that we ourselves can take better care of ourselves and to take care, better care of our money and our lives and our children's education. The whole work is done much better without the federal government down on our backs and in our wallets. It's time we restored freedom to America. And we have that opportunity. People are starting to recognize. People are accepting the argument that the economy is now in shambles, that there was a housing bubble and there's been a collapse of the housing bubble. The American people now, by a large majority, are saying, we've been overseas too long. We don't need an American empire. We need to defend our borders and forget about the borders in Afghanistan and Pakistan. It's time to bring the troops home. There is, there is no argument that is viable to say that we have to keep troops in South Korea. They've been there since I was in high school. They've been in Japan since World War II. They've been in Germany since World War II. We're flat out broke. And we bring them home and let all the military people who come home help protect our borders and let them spend the money here at home. We need a boost in the economy. If, if we got into this trouble by a lack of, uh, lack of loyalty to our rule of law and our Constitution, it is not all that difficult. All we have to do is restore the belief in freedom, restore the belief in what made America great, restore our conviction that the Constitution works. It would take a while, but it might only take a year. We're into the fourth year now of this recession. Yes, we, we got in this trouble 
by not having respect for the Constitution, we can get out of this trouble by respecting the rule of law and sending only people to Washington who know and understand and will obey the Constitution. Thank you very much. Watch me!